that is making itself more and more obvious and less and less easy to ignore. The truth of our oneness and inseparability. An infection in any part of our body, if left untreated, will eventually cause illness and even death to the entire organism. COVID has demonstrated so perfectly and beautifully that an infection in one meat market of one city, of one country, brings illness, death, destruction, and devastation to the entire world. As a physical body, we are only as healthy as our weakest part. It would be a tragic joke to say, oh yeah, I'm very strong and healthy and capable, except for this heart disease that could kill me at any moment. Or I'm really strong and healthy and capable, except for this gangrene in my toe that is seeping its way, moving up through my leg. We understand intuitively that one infection, one illness, undermines the entire organism. In the same way, we as humanity are one organism, a collection of individual bodies, but united, connected, interdependent, breathing one air, living on one land. And if we didn't realize it before, COVID has made it abundantly clear that none of us can be sustainably healthy until and unless all of us are sustainably healthy. None of us can be sustainably safe until and unless all of us are sustainably safe. In order for development to be truly sustainable, it has to include all. It was such an honor for our Global Interfaith WASH Alliance to organize the Leave No One Behind Summit in partnership with WSSCC and FANSA here at our Parmarth Nikitan in December, where we were able to review the great success of the Swatch Bodit mission under the leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji and the Ministry, first of Drinking Water and Sanitation, and then now of Jal Shakti, to truly ensure that everyone, everywhere, has access to improved wash, water, sanitation, and hygiene. And in that summit, in addition to bringing together members of the 14 groups who are typically marginalized, typically left behind. We also brought together leaders of all of the major religions. The role of faith and faith leaders cannot be underestimated. Aside from provision of actual services on the ground, it is faith and faith leaders who set the norms for how we think, how we choose, how we act, how we live. It's our faith that tells us what is pop, what is punya, what is sin, what is merit. And it is also, precariously sometimes, our faith which tells us who is us and who is them. It tragically is frequently the world of faith that creates and then emphasizes these distinct lines between us and them on the basis of race, religion, color, culture, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, whatever it may be. And that is why it is so essential for the world of faith, for the faith leaders to step forward and break these barriers, to say, all are us. There is no them. In a beautiful serendipity, yesterday was International Peace Day. And faith leaders have been coming together for more than a century in the name of peace. 
But one of the things that our Global Interfaith WASH Alliance is so committed to is expanding that definition of peace. Because today, our definition of peace must include ensuring that all of our sisters and brothers of every race, every religion, every color, every creed, have access to safe and sufficient, clean water, clean air, clean soil, sanitation, hygiene, human rights, and whatever they need to ensure that those human rights are fulfilled. I want to end with a, a quick story. I used to volunteer at the Special Olympics in California. And the Special Olympics are, as you probably know, the Olympics for those who are deemed special. Whether we say handicapped, whether we say challenged, in either case, they are those who have unique abilities and disabilities on both the physical level as well as the mental level. And there was a race, a running race, in which five of the young girls who were deemed mentally challenged, what tragically in those days was referred to as retarded, that thank God we're no longer using terminology like this, but this is going back decades. And the ready, set, go goes, the gun goes off, the five of them start running. But shortly into the race, one of them trips and falls. Now, in what we would call a normal race, the other four of them would just keep running. Because, of course, the ultimate goal is to cross that finish line as fast as possible, alone. But all four of these girls stopped. And they reached down and they helped up this fifth girl who had fallen. And it was amazing because from the stands, everybody was yelling, just go, run, run, run. But they didn't. They lifted her up. They brushed her off, and together, because her leg or knee or ankle or whatever it was was actually injured in some way, she couldn't run anymore. So all five of them, hand in hand, crossed that finish line together. And they ensured that rather than one winner and four losers, that all of them, were winners. And that, that is the vision that we need today to realize that quite ironically, stopping to help others is not a mark that makes someone challenged or handicapped, but it's actually the mark of those from whom we need to learn, from whom we need to take inspiration so that our world can become one in which it's not one through the finish line and all the rest losers, but together as one interconnected humanity, as one organism of humanity, we survive and we thrive sustainably together. So I'm so, so glad to be having this, this beautiful webinar today. I'm so deeply grateful to our beautiful partners at WSSCC and, of course, to the Ministry of Jal Shakti, our Honorable Minister, to the United Nations and especially to the UN Resident Coordinator here in India, our respected Renata. And we're so, so grateful that today we also have with us the Deputy Executive Director of WSSCC, Sue Coates. It's such a great, great joy to be together with all of you and to have the wonderful opportunity to share.